Hello, King's a &E. In 10. Thank you. Bye. 10. King's College Hospital, London. A major trauma centre. Have you got a blood pressure yet? She was on the floor and I thought she's dead. And one of the busiest A&E departments in the world. Stabbing, code red. King's is everything. Everything pounds in through that door. The fire has been trapped between him and the bridge. A place where love... Can I wait here until she comes home? Can I come home with her? Life. Oh, apart from having a brain injury, never better. What happened? I got bitten. By who? By me mate. <laughs> and loss unfold every single day. I've not got a happy feeling of you. No. Not breathing. Stop. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department in just one 24-hour period. You're going to be all right. You know what happens when things are bad? Daddy's here. Please don't cry. The moment that you're in recess and you're really sick and all you can think about is, am I going to live, am I going to die? Silly things go out the window and ultimately what's important is realised that you're loved and that you're not alone. It's been almost an hour. Hmm? Do you think I should check that we haven't missed your name? Mm -hmm. There. <laughs> Hello, King Denny. There we go. It's just the ankle, then. You're just in hospital, sir. You collapsed. Do you remember what happened? I like the sharp end. I wanted to do emergency medicine as a career. I qualified in 1980, so, you know, I've been around for quite some time, sort of got the old have been there badge. So, bed three is empty now. Second adult red call, six minutes. At second adult red call, six minutes. Ah, wait! Hold it, hold it, hold it! Oh, oh, fuck! Oh, God! Yeah, I, I, It's a cacophony of sounds. It's a bit like being in a jungle with a whole lot of bird songs going on. Oh, God. Different birds calling to you, bing bong, tannoy, someone yelling for a bit of kit. It's a cacophony. Wait, please, 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 just hold my arm and, oh, my Lord. Oh, that noise. Whoa. Hello, sir. Soon as we get you a bit more comfortable in a trolley, you will feel better, OK? Ah! Oops, Take it oh, easy. Down a little bit, please, that's it. Oh, up a little bit. Ah! Take your time. Okay, right. Break. Break, break on. Break, break, break on. Break on. Yeah, yeah, I'm holding. Yeah, don't, yeah. Ready? Yeah. Whilst drilling on a building site, 50 year old Jim has fallen backwards into a hole in the ground, injuring his shoulder. Okay. Okay, so, Jim, has this happened before, sir? No. No. What's that scar on your shoulder? Stab wound. Stab wound, okay. Just yeah. shuffle your bum one more Christ. time, Jim, well, yeah? Just yeah, and then we get you, because there's not enough space on this side to get you in. People respond to pain in different ways. Ah, you can have the very quiet person who doesn't say very much. All right, let's put it up. Ah, lift, lift down, God! You can have those that are screaming and yelling and abusive. Ah, oh, lift me up, me up, oh, God! I think traditionally, yeah, men don't 
tolerate pain as well. You're in bed now. I know. I, I know. I know where I am, Doctor. I'm just... Ah! Ah! Please don't do that. Oh! This is going to really help you, Jim. Yeah. Thread your arm through the sling, and then the sling will take the weight. Oh! I know. We've got it in position. Ah! Lift it! Lift it! Lift it! Lift it! Lift it! Okay. There. Oh my! And then pull up a bit. Fine. Stop, stop, stop. That's fine, thank you. Okay, well done. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get you a. Right. How's that? Let's put some padding underneath that. Uh, yeah, you've had uh, quite a lot of pain relief. You've had about three, uh, three times uh, what we'd normally give you. It takes, you know, if you can keep going at it and take a good lot of breaths until you're starting to feel a bit light-headed, and then it should be about kicking in by that stage. I am concerned that you've been called and we've not heard. I had information on her, man. I want to know how to plan my, my strategy. She looks good, you know. Hey. <laughs> she came in just before you, this lady. So, or rather, she was, she came in after you, but she was checked in more quickly than this lady did. So that must Hello. Oh, so I was going to say that must mean you're next, but you're not. How <clears throat> can I help you? Um, what have you done? Basically, I suffer from overexcitedness and um, I kicked a concrete block. Me medical condition? No, no, no. No, no, no. 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 Kind of a bit over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Energetic? So I, yeah, very energetic. Kicked a concrete block yesterday. I thought it was a football, because we were playing football in the park. That's going to um, hurt. Yeah, pain quite a lot. There you go. You washed your feet. Excuse me? You washed your feet. Um, what is it? I think Blood. <laughs> Let's make sure it's not split down. <sighs> Bend your toe for me. Yeah. Too painful. Oh, well done. So that means it's not broken? No, it doesn't mean it's not broken. So it'll still be broken even if I can't. It'll be broken. Again. I'm going to send you for an x ray, all right? Oh. How do you your pain threshold is? Usually quite high, but I have a low tolerance for toes. Stubbing toes or toes being stood on. Oh. Other than that, I can put up with quite a lot. OK, so, Jim, what we're going to do now is try and take an X-ray without moving you. We'll find out whether it's dislocated or broken, and those are the two possibilities that we're thinking about. Fantastic. Let's see if we can get this X-ray. Finger is there. On the side. Bend this finger. Ah! Can you bend... Oh. Is your finger sore? Okay, bend it. Move that sling down a little bit just to support yeah. the arm a I'm a bit of a lump, nearly six foot, and it was uh, built like a brick shit house. So there's a bit of there's a bit, there's a bit of substance there. It's embarrassing, isn't it? You come into hospital and and there's all nurses there, and you're screaming like a little girl, and and I'm supposed to be this big rough tough cream puff, and there I am screaming like a little girl. It, but uh, you know, it was painful. It really was. But hey, I'll hold my hands up. I was in agony. Oh, don't, no, don't pull, okay. don't pull. You know what, we'll go, we'll go. Jim, oh, Jim, 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 yeah. Jim. It's all right, we'll go back to Cutton then, yeah? Okay, thank you. Yeah? Ah! <laughs> An hour and a half. Well, you expect a four hour. Yeah, but you do expect to, to be assessed quite quickly. Mm. See, my GPs and surgeons get paid now. 
find you. A lot of what you read in the, <laughs> in the Daily Mail isn't true, oh. though, Dad. Thirty-year-old Temi is on his way back from X-ray. Scans show he's broken his toe. All I'm going to do is strap your toe to the next one to act as a sport, a support to act as a splint. Okay. That's a little bit difficult with flip-flops on. Do you find men or women deal with pain better? <laughs> oh, gosh, women. Sorry. And would you like a crutch to help you? Yeah, please. Which it has one? to go in line with my fashion fashion sense. Not the fracture sense. <laughs> I like that. And often women are a bit more sensible, as in they've taken painkillers, they've done something about it. Uh, men usually haven't taken anything or done anything sensible. OK. No! <laughs> Can you just give me, like, one cool cane? We don't have cool canes. This oh, is the man. NHS. <laughs> what's wrong with the, what's wrong with this? It's summertime, man. March, April. You won't. You only need this for a couple of weeks. True. May, June. All right. Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so happy. Why are you running in the Olympics? No, no, no. But yeah, uh, Olympics is a once in a lifetime opportunity, man. Be, busy a broken leg would be a hindrance. This gentleman, Jim, has yep. uh, fallen down a small 60-centimetre pole, sort of stepped backwards, and as he's gone down, his arm has caught a railing to stop people going down, and he's done that. Yep. He's only comfortable in that position. Jim needs an X-ray to discover the extent of his injury to his shoulder. I've been to a and &E numerous times over the years. Let's just say I've had my moments rolling around the floor with people. I've been stabbed, shot, hit with baseball bats, knocked about a little bit. I've earned me lumps and bumps. Ah! And I've been in a lot of incidents in my life where pain's been involved. A lot of one to ten level, this is the 11. You all right, Jim? Super. Okay. Interesting. It's anterior, but it's wedged between rib and the uh, glenoid. Why well, can't move it out of that position? Wedged, wedged up and in there. It's almost three-point immobilisation, isn't it? Interesting radiography. Absolutely. Yep. The way his X-ray turned out, I think, quite surprised all of us quite an excruciating pain of, of bone on bone being wedged and not able to move your arm at all. It's amazing what people can do to themselves, situations they can get into that are one-offs. OK, so, Jim, the shoulder is dislocated, but it's lying in a very funny position. So if I show you on me, you've got your collarbone, and underneath that there's a little process. You, it's gone up and it's wedged in there against the ribs and against the bit of the shoulder where it should be sitting. Yes. So this is not something we've seen wedged in this position. Sometimes... That's making it be awkward. <laughs> so what we need to do is to give you a bit of a whiff of anaesthetic and give it a pull along the line that it's in. So what we're going to do is just pull it straight out. When will I go back to work tomorrow? When are we about to go back to work? Yeah. Your arm will be in a sling. Oh, will it? Yeah. How long ago? Probably about... Five weeks? Oh, you're joking. Yeah. This recession is killing the, the building game. A lot of people are really suffering and really struggling. When I thought I finally got a good job, but then I was a week at work and then this happens. The first week back at work, after being out of work for a few months. So I was absolutely devastated, because obviously it's not, I, had to, I don't like not working. You know, we all need money, we all have to live. So it, it, it was, it was, I just couldn't believe it. My luck, I just thought, pff, it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck. People are more worried about losing their jobs. So often, you can understand why people don't or can't follow your advice. They have other factors in their life. They need money, they need to look after the family, 
ready to eat. So it's an unusual one, is it? It's very unusual. I haven't seen it, and I've been working and doing emergency medicine for 30 odd years, and I oh haven't God. seen one. If there's a male equivalent of childbirth, you've just been through it. But if that means anything. Yeah, it does. How's that feel? You all right, Dad? Yeah. Not painful. Mm -hmm. Nah, man, not at all, man. Just, I just got the diagnosis. I've got to go home and put my leg up, man. I've got broken toe. Six weeks. <laughs> Thank you. Who are these people? Who are these people? You've been on holiday. We only came back Sunday. Yeah, you can see they've been on holiday. Oh. That's why I'm worried about my leg. I think I've got DVT. See, I've only got one leg and they want to look after it. Oh, it's like me. <laughs> well, this one is uh, no more, and this one's it takes off of a night. <laughs> yeah, they're about £10,000 each. Got a new leg. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Cheaper to keep the ones you got. Mm, yeah. <laughs> We've known each other nearly 49 years. We live 200 yards apart. They used to watch me walk out through the park. Yeah, she had the greatest pair cousin. of hips you ever see. I, tell you, <laughs> I used to watch as she walked past. And, and then one day he pinched my shoe and ran up the hill. I chased him up the hill to get my shoe back, and from there on, 49 years later, we're still together. And as I say, we've only had one 24-hour period apart in 49 years. In 2009, 63-year-old Alan lost his left leg. But today, it's his right leg that's brought him into King's. Tell me the story, what's happened. Let's start with that. I've just come back off of holiday. Yeah. And my leg is very large. Mm -hmm. So did it start before you'd gone to holiday? No, no, it started about... During your holiday? Yeah, about four or five days after the holiday started. I just put it down to the fact that it was the sun. Right. So, I, don't get me wrong, I wrap my legs up mm -hmm. and I stay under the umbrella, as mm -hmm. you can see. She's the one that sits out and worships the sun. Not Where me. did you go? Goa. Goa. So how long was the flight? That's quite... Ten hours. Ten hours, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's have a look at your leg. I can, I can already see it's quite swollen. See, I've only got one leg and they want to look after it. June 28th, 1976, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with advanced stage 4 Hodgkin's. I've got 50 lumps as big as golf balls throughout the body at the time of diagnosis. Sorry, which year was that? 1976. 76. Before you were born. Yes, two years before I was born. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> A little bit of grey. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me look older. Yeah. <laughs> Not that we joke about life in general anyway, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. Life is a giggle, isn't it? And I think if we didn't, we'd end up crying mm. most of the time, so it's best to laugh. I went to the kitchen one Friday night, mm. end of January 2009, uh, get a couple of bottles of water out. And she shouted out, what's the bang? I said, forget the bang, get an ambulance. My leg had actually exploded right. inside. Okay. The radiation bombardment I'd had in 77 okay. was still active, I'd had The night it exploded scared everything out of me, and a fear made me laugh, to be truthful. To see it moving around like it was, you know? Gets up there, they rotted it. We thought, right, they've rotted it. Bit of luck, they've saved the leg. Then when they told us it had to come off, I was gutted, I was upset. Not for me. I didn't want him not to feel like a man. He's always been my man. OK. I think what we should do is get a scan on the, on the leg anyway. Right. OK. We've sent her for the blood test, and sometimes if the INR drops, to below what it's meant to be, right. then you can develop a clot. So, right. okay. so I think what we should do is get a scan. Oh, okay. okay. Right, right, right. So just take a seat down the end, and I'll call the lab, and then we'll see if we can uh, organise the scan for this afternoon. OK, sir. Thank you. My biggest fear is losing my right leg. 
There's no way <laughs> I know he could live if he had to live in a wheelchair. It's not Alan. Okay, this is going to be a straight pull out, I think. We'd obviously like something that relaxes the muscles and takes away perception of pain. He's allergic to pain. He's allergic to pain. Okay, yeah. The anaesthetic will knock Jim out for 10 minutes. In that time, Chris and her team hope to pull his shoulder back into place. This is just something for us to pull against. I'm just going to slide it down your back a bit. Oh, Jim. Not doing anything yet. It's just getting it in position. Oh, okay, so we're not doing anything. Oh, no, it is. Oh, it's the A&E doctor's not in here. I'm sorry, it was us. Yes, was you're us. absolutely right, Dan. <laughs> it wasn't our fault. We're big enough to apologise. <laughs> Take a nice big deep breath for me, sir. And yeah, it should be coming here. Just lie him down. Take your arm out. I'm going to come traction. We might need both of you to help. I will still help. He's quite a big guy. And I'll try and slip. No. Nope. Bones grinding. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Hang on, if I. Okay. Try taking it right down towards his pelvis and pulling downwards. It can look quite brutal to the outsider. I mean, you're having to pull something back into place. And so you need to put a lot of traction and pull. I suppose if you were to do that to someone out on the street, it'd be called abuse. Okay. No. No joy? It's stuck here. It just doesn't come back. Do Three swap balls? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm pushing it from here. Got it. Got it out. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. It's just needed that tug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, sir. How are you getting on? It's all done, all finished. It's okay. No, yeah, it's done. It's good, isn't it? Seriously. Hmm. Hello. Yay. Wakey, wakey. That's amazing. <laughs> and the rest of the thing. Yeah. 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 When people are in that amount of pain, you don't see their true personality at all. Um, it's distorted by pain. And when the pain's relieved, you have a normal human being again. It's a bit like women in childbirth. They're not their normal personality when they're going through that painful episode. Uh, but once it's over, it's like it's never happened. Well, I feel comfortable, actually, do you know so, what I mean? But yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry if I was swearing. No, 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 I think, I think I, when you were anaesthetised, we, even with you completely anaesthetised, I couldn't move the arm from that position. It was wedged in bone on bone. Normally that doesn't happen in a shoulder dislocation. So, yes, you were. Oh, I knew I'd done something, you, you, know. you We could tell you had a lot of pain. I've never yeah. seen that in 10 years. That kind of so. 30. Oh, oh, well, that doesn't make me seem so. Yeah, it's just been up, to, it's just been topped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad I made your day. You yeah. have, sir. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody moans to me about the NHS, I shall punch him straight on the nose. Is your boss going to give you um, a lift, lift home? home? He certainly is. Ah. 
Yeah. You haven't got no clothes for me. I haven't got a chance to look, so I'll have a look now. Lovely, thank now you very much. I've just gutted, I can't believe I've had all this time off work, I've finally come back to work, and three days in, and then this happens. It's just unreal. It's not much luck, mate, not much luck at all. It never rains, but it pours. No, scan. No. Um, vascular lab. Oh. Vascular lab. It's up on the first floor down the end. Oh, you've got to walk there. No, he's got to walk. Well, I usually do, but... It's because the legs are swollen. I don't think they want him to. No. Two and a half years I've had my leg off. But they wanted to take it off in 1984. Oh, you lasted quite a long time. Oh, well, it got to work, haven't you, girl? Yeah. You don't get nothing being on the social. What, your wheelchair, my angel? Ex-builder Alan is worried that he has the limb-threatening condition, deep vein thrombosis, in his one remaining leg. An ultrasound will show whether his leg is at risk. How long has it been swollen like this again? Uh, it's been about three weeks now. Three weeks, okay. I fall over on an average of three to four times a day because my leg, my artificial leg, has to be loose. And if I come across a slight bit of pavement that is more than an inch proud, I could kick it and I'd go down. It makes you realise that this one leg is more precious than it should be otherwise. Yeah, you don't want a blood clot and not know about it, so... No, no, not when you've only got one leg left. And if you take a deep breath in for me, and out again... Why don't you tell me I've got no clot? I oh, know I've got a leg. Quite forceful. You don't know how many times I've sat here and they've done this and I've not heard the noise. And your heart goes in your mouth, you know what I mean? So to hear that is everything. That's good. That's good. I don't see a clot in there. Good man, thanks for that. Okay, sorry. No, I really appreciate it. That puts a lot of mind at rest. Good, good. Really good. He heard a pulse. Oh. It's the first time I've heard a pulse in my legs for five years. So, the other one they took off, but this one's got a pulse. Oh, that's nice. Good. Oh, wonderful. To me, he'll always be the person I hold on to when I walk out with. We still walk down the street arm in arm. Yeah. <laughs> we just grown together. Oh, got it. I like to think it's more like. A centaur. I just stay out of. Pat's got the legs. I've got the arms. So being a centaur, you've got a man's head and a woman uh, and an egg's body. So we, <laughs> we, we could, that's, that's what makes up the uh, centaur. Yeah, that's us. To you again. Okay. Um, Any minus okay. hello? Hey, mate. Is that sore? Yeah. yeah. Can you bend it at all? Not much. Oh, sorry, sir. Yeah, I've got a big lump at the back. Yeah, that. I think that's a cyst. What we need to do is we need to put a little bit of anaesthetic here yeah. and stick a needle in there yeah. and take away some of the fluids. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. You stay there. We'll work around you. 83-year-old James has a cyst on his knee that has left him housebound. Whoa! Ow! 
Oh! Aim for the middle. Look at that. Oh, God dang it! Give you a bit more aesthetic, sir. I can't have this now. I'm gone. Sir, we need to do this. No, I'm going on. I don't think you'll be able to walk home, sir. No, I, I want an ambulance to take me on. But you won't be able to walk when you get home, will you? Yeah. Let's you give you... You're bloody Guinness. No, we're not, no. sir. Let's give you some... No, I don't want nothing else. I want to go home, actually. Why don't we try? You okay. can't stop me from going home. I don't Unless think you, you're safe to go home, sir. Place, well, I don't think you're safe to go home, sir. OK? No, 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 no. no. What's going on with your leg? No, I'm not, I don't care what it is. If it's going rotten, it's going rotten. James, all we need to do is put a bit more painkiller in there. No, I don't want that. Feel it. We'll give you a second to think about it. No, I will not. Oh, <laughs> They're treating me like a guinea pig. Check my one first. I want to go on. Want an answer. Now, how are you going to manage when you get home now? You want to call an ambulance? How are you going to be all right? I could walk. I could get around. Oh, I Sorry. could get around the flat on me arch. <laughs> well, that is, that is not good enough. Oh, it's good, it's good enough for me. We get a lot of patients with trips, falls and, you know, wounds and stuff. And a lot of these patients are elderly patients. And they are my favourite. We can't discharge you home unless you're well. I'm all right. No, you're not all yeah, right. Oh, yeah. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I'm going so home. you don't want to get better? No, I couldn't. Yeah, I don't even. I always ensure that they have all that they need to go in and they're safe to go in. The reason being is that I believe that these people have given so much to society and now it's time for us to really give back. But you'll just be back again with the, the only, more swelling. The only way they'll stop me going home is they come the police. And the police can't be bugger all about. So I want to go on. I think one of the main things is the independence, that they don't want to give up the fact that I'm in an independent person. I want to make my own decision. You shouldn't come along and make the decision for me. But no one wants to lose their independence. Jane, you're not going to be safe to go home, and we have a duty of care to you. We can't send you home unless you're safe. I'm still ain't having that done. <laughs> All right, I'll put this rail up so that you're safe. I'll go and have a word with the doctor, all right? I want to go out. Come on, hurry up. Get the Jesus King's College Hospital. Okay. 91 female. Stroke. Stroke red for seven minutes. Stroke red for seven minutes. King's has a specialist stroke unit and sees more than 800 stroke patients every year. Are you Rose? Yes. I'm Des. Dave. Desmond. Desmond. Right. Good to meet you. Too. How are you? Oh well, I just think I'm going to get better. Oh well, I think I hope yeah. so. I certainly hope so. You have quite a sore-looking shoulder here. Can you move your arm? Oh, you can. Excellent. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Hello there. Hello. My name's Jen. I'm one of the nurses yeah. here. Jen. Jen. Yeah, that was Desmond. That was Desmond, it was oh, indeed. Right. He's a good lad, that one. Yeah. yeah. So they've all been very positive. Aren't they good? So they should be. Hello, Rose. Right. Hello. 
My name's Ndaba. I'm one of the other doctors Ndaba. working. Ndaba. Sorry? Don't worry. <laughs> Ndaba. I've got it right. That's perfect. Okay. Perfect. Oh, How old are you, Rose? I'm 91. It's very impressive. Nearly, no, so I've got, you've got to keep me look nice and OK by March. The 29th, that's right. in a few weeks. Time is that now. when your birthday and is? I'll be 92. Perfect. Brilliant. Do you know what month it is? Do you know? No, I, I do have a, a job keeping up to date on my. It is difficult. I have to go and look at the Radio Times to find out what day. Yeah, <laughs> my, my gran used to do that too. <laughs> Best way to do it, I say. Yeah, well, Definitely. Pop your arm down there for me, Rose. I, I did do a bit of washing yesterday morning. Did you? I do have a woman who does walking. You're multi-talented, aren't oh, you, yeah, Rose? Yeah, it's very hey? impressive. You look at some people that are just amazing, and my nan was one of those people. She was in a wheelchair, mm. she couldn't use her legs, she had one arm that she couldn't use, and she still loved life. She still went out with her electric wheelchair, she did loads of things for the church. She was incredible. I had an amazing role model from, you know, from the day mm. I was born. So, did you have any children, Rose? No. Oh. No. Well, I come from a big family. I'm the only one now. I've lost them all now. Have you? Yeah, I've lost all the family. No. Oh. All five brothers, five sister-in-laws, one sister, one brother-in-law, four mm. aunts and uncles, mum and dad. Oh. Must be difficult. Yeah. when my nan died. It was pretty traumatic. Because she, for me, was just, you know, the first tattoo I got when I was 18 was for my nan. And, you know, I just absolutely adored her. Yeah, it was, it was awful. <sighs> You all right, Rose? Yes. So we're going to take you for a head CT. See what's going on in that head of yours. Oh, right. All right. Should be interesting what they find there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't remember all the chatty bits. Oh, they won't worry about your chatty bits, don't you worry, I'm darling? Them. No, I, we're really enjoying them. No, you, you know, people that don't have family, I, I don't know how they get through things. I don't change my care with those people, but I, I do sometimes want to adopt a granny and, you know, just give them a little cuddle. Otherwise. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Are I would feel like a bit of an idiot. Are you in a lot of pain? <laughs> no, it hurts a bit here. Okay. Let me help you back up on the bed, sweetheart. Let me get yeah. you back a bit more. There we go. To, to take the fluid off, we'll give you an injection to, to prevent it from being painful. Well, they've done that. It bloody nearly killed me. I don't want to... Is it the pain? I'm staying here for a little while. A few days, that's it. James has a cyst on his knee. Because of the risk of him falling, the hospital want to keep him in. Cut me bloody leg off. No, no, we don't want to do that, because you want to go do your shopping, don't you? No, I don't want to do your shopping. You just want to sit indoors all the time? Yeah. I'll be glad when I'm dead. I'm 83, that's good life, that's it. Fair enough. Working in A&E has changed me as a person. There's certain things that you will not take for granted. I've had major illness um, in, in the family. My ex-husband, who is my dearest and best friend, 
and it has been a difficult um, road. When you're on the other side of someone being ill, you get frustrated, you get angry, and you think the system isn't working for you, so you're on the other side of what a lot of patients will come in and say to you. For me, it's good when you can encourage and, and you know, try to counsel someone, and you're actually doing it because you have been there. I have, I have once stood in your shoe. Okay, would you let us then keep you in hospital to see what happens with it then? Could I have to keep you in here for a few days, see how it could be? Mm -hmm. Or I'll go home now. And uh, my mm -hmm. pyjamas are over there. Yeah, we'll get your pyjamas on. All right, let me go and speak to the doctor, yeah? He, do, he doesn't want it to be aspirated, but he'll stay in hospital. All right, Mr. Do you like tea or coffee? Tea. Tea, yeah. I wouldn't be, be seen dead drinking coffee. <laughs> it's all right when you're drunk, you've got an hangover. Drink it neat. Yeah, it's fair enough. When I was younger, it was all right. You right there, Rose? Yeah, it's all right. I was just wondering what the period is. The time pop, is 25 to 4 in the morning. Good Lord. Time that you got some shut eye, I should think. I don't think so. You no. don't think so? Oh, too much on the vines. Have moment. you, darling? Yeah. All right, sweetheart. Well, listen, I'll just sort out this other lady and then Thank I'll come and have a chat. Okay. All right? Yeah. Well, so we've we've done the CT scan, right. um, Rose. Oh, and, you've done it, have you? Yeah, it's all all finished. Um, and and what it what it does show is that there's a little bit of a small um, stroke in the right side of the the brain, which which may be affecting your your speech and. Yeah. Um, a little bit of uh, numbness down the left side as well. Yeah, okay. other than that, I can remember yeah. most things, but yeah. the reason why or how I feel, I, I can't. Sure. So, Rose, I think you'll need to stay in with us overnight. Yes. So we'll take you up to the ward upstairs. All right. OK. And um, we'll continue to monitor things, see how you go. Oh, but it, but it, oh right. But, but, it, but it may be a couple of days, depending on how you go. Right, OK. okay. Rose, Rose, oh. hello, darling. I'm just going to pop this blood pressure cuff back on you, all right, sweet? Mm. Yeah. There we go. Come here, my dear. To reach 90 is an achievement for anybody. I mean, I'd be lucky if I reach 60 sometimes, I think. Um, but to reach that age is an amazing achievement. Are you comfortable enough? Yes, yeah, OK. Pop that down there. Some people, they get to a certain age and they think, oh, well, you know, there's no point carrying on. Might as well give up, you know? And even some younger people, they've just got... They get up and go, has got up and gone. And you just think, come on, you know, you've got your whole life. You're 20, get up, go and do something. If you want to go and do it, just grab life by the short and curlies and go with it, you know? Ain't hey, Kings? Good morning. had a lovely day today and I've told everybody now I've reversed my age that I'm now 29. The only thing is I can't remember what I used to do when I was 29 to 30. We 
save up and go away on holiday because we don't have a laugh. And I think that's what we does it. We laugh at everything. Yeah. And, uh... I mean, laughing at the leg in the end makes you feel better yeah. about it, yeah. And calling it, naming it, I mean, people don't like it. They As I call say, it Stumpy. You it's go got on. a name. Please don't do that. If that's the equivalent of childbirth, then what are they moaning about? <laughs> I'm only joking, yeah. If that's the equivalent of childbirth, then God bless the girls. It's a 19-year-old trapped by a barge. Josh! The barge has been trapped between him and the bridge. Ah! Why the hell did we decide to go clubbing on Sunday night? Because we're hardcore. Oh, there's a bruise on there. You're giving it quite a whack, haven't you? Every bloke is going to think, oh, yeah, my crown jewels, I've got to protect those. <gasps> oh, baby. 